All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raha, Raha, Kwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Arkham of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear for bearing a sincere salutation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among their number, which are the Hebrew Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. <clears throat> and this is an epistle that I had entitled, Learn to Discern, Train Your Spiritual Eyes. All right, so. I wanted to start this one off by getting the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, starting at verse. Let me see where I can start at. All right, I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads, <clears throat> Salakia. And Yahweh said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Yahweh said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And Yahweh said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to Yahweh. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will shew thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which Yahweh spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto Yahweh. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come, <coughs> Salakia. That he looked on Eliab and said, Surely Yahweh's anointed is before him. But Yahweh said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For Yahweh seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but Yahweh looketh on the heart. All right. Now. Let me see if I can uh, get to the point right here. All right. Let me skip down to verse 9. And it reads, Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither hath Yahweh chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, Yahweh hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Verse 12. And he sent him and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And Yahweh said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of Yahweh came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. <clears throat> All right. Now, the reason why I got this, um, <clears throat> so like, yeah, this precept right here is because it, it, it perfectly surmises the, um, it basically perfectly sums up what I, why I named this epistle, what I named it basically training your spiritual eyes okay because uh samuel he he was a um he was a prophet of yahweh bashmi al shah he was high level all right and he was well respected amongst the uh, Salaki, amongst the congregation but even he you know even he was looking in this instance with uh with his carnal eyes all right yahweh bashmi al shah the heavenly father had to remind him to um, look upon the spirit because the heavenly father looks on the inward man, not the outward man. All right. He thought that because David's older brothers had the, um, you know, probably like the fit, the, the, the physique, the height and all that other type of stuff. And, you know, he had the look, he figured that this would be the next king of Israel. But the heavenly father was saying, nah, this, this, he don't like, he had to remind him, I don't move that way. All right. So right here, it ended up being King David. 
Now, he was David at the time. He wasn't made king yet, but he was the youngest out of um, eight children. All right. He had seven older brothers. And I believe I believe it was seven because right here in verse. Right in, in verse 10, it said again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel and Samuel said unto Jesse, Yahweh hath not chosen these. All right. So that would make King David the eighth. All right. So he had seven older brothers, but he was the baby. So. Salaki. So King David being the baby, you wouldn't expect that. Also, if you get into understanding how our customs are, typically when it comes to a firstborn uh, among uh, among sons, the firstborn gets, you know, first dibs on inheritance and stuff like that. And, and you know, when it came time that Israel did start to have kings, you would expect that, OK, the firstborn son becomes king. But, you know, that only works if Yahweh Bashmiel Shai didn't already preordain um, another child in the spirit, like King David, for example, he was the youngest out of his, his, um, he was the youngest out of his brothers. All right. He had seven older brothers. He was the youngest of Jesse's sons, but he was the one that was chosen to be the next King of Israel. All right. And by the time King David became King and he had his own sons and daughters. All right. <laughs> Salakia. He had, um, I believe it was Amnon, Chiliab, Absalom, Adonijah and some um and some other sons that he had. But the point is Solomon was um I believe King Solomon was the youngest during that time, if not one of the youngest. And I believe Amnon had already been put to death by Absalom for us uh, for you know basically graping his sister. And Absalom got put to death by Joab when he tried to, you know, not not tried to, when he revolted against King David. And attempted to usurp the throne. So the oldest I think left at that time <clears throat> would have been Adonijah, unless something happened to Chiliad. But whatever the case may be, if you read the scriptures, Adonijah tried to usurp the throne. <clears throat> so, it, and you know, it went against what Yahweh Bashmi had already set up. So, in end of the day, Solomon was the king. Yahweh Bashmi had already ordained King Solomon to be the next king of Israel. So it, it just goes like that. It's always a spiritual thing. So that's why. It's one of the many reasons why you have to apply this precept and not look on a on a brother's outward appearance and be like, oh, yeah, this is the guy, because you don't know, like the Lord can easily not be dealing with them on that level. Now, you do have some brothers that will have that balance, like some brothers will have the look, you know, beard, garment, uh, um, uh, the voice, you know, the spirit, all that, you know, and the Lord is dealing with them. And in some brothers, they don't necessarily have every single aspect of a typical uh, Hebrew Israelite look according to the scriptures, you know, like having the full beard and the, uh, uh, you know, the headband and, the, uh, you know, I'm just trying to think of like things that's, um, uh, what is that things that, you know, and that is, uh, that's, uh, what's the word indicators of our culture. Like, okay. When you think Hebrew Israelites, you think men that wear garments, they don't cover their, uh, they don't cover their head, meaning they don't wear damn hats, Alazar, unless you're the high priest, which you're not. You know, you're wearing a um, and you're wearing a metri, but that's not the case. All right, the damn snapback is not a metri. That's Greek fashion. But anyway, um, yeah, these type of things you think that a Jake has, and you know the Lord's dealing with him on the level. But you know, some Jakes just so happen to have that because all right, you have that. It's it's not you're not going off. It's a righteous thing to wear. You know, wear the garments, the fringes, border blue garment down to the foot. You know, rehearse the righteous acts. But you know, it's not every single time that that guy is that guy. All right. Now, let me get the precept that uh, made me want to get this lesson. <clears throat> All right. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, better known as Sirach, chapter 11, starting at verse one. And it reads, wisdom lifted up the head of him that is of low grace and maketh him to sit among great men. All right. So it's wisdom. Ultimately, you know, you're going to find countless precepts in the scriptures getting into wisdom, 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 wisdom. All right. Because in our true culture. Us being the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, as well as the speckled bird, our um, we were taught by Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, all right, to 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 value wisdom. That's why the scripture says, "Wisdom is the principal thing." So, with all thy uh, getting, get understanding. All right, roughly paraphrasing. I might let me just go ahead and get that precept. Come, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. 
This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7, and it reads, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, give wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. And she, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. All right. So if if you basically want to be, you know, exalted, respected, which, you know, first and foremost, you should want Yahweh Shai to, you know, get his glory first, like the Akim always say. But, you know, ultimately, we all still men. So, you know, it's a it's a um, it's a righteous way to go about that. But the point is, if you want to go about it the righteous way, you got to seek wisdom first. Like that should be what you desire just as much, if not more, as you desire a fine ass Jake woman. All right. Or a fine ass woman in general. So do, when you do that, you'll find yourself like the scripture, like uh, Proverbs chapter four says right here, you know, you'll get an ornament of grace. Now, that can be a figurative thing or it could be a literal thing. You know, like you'll you'll find yourself in situations where you got, you know, like you know, the, the the jewelry that you won and all this other type of stuff because we, co we come into the kingdom of heaven, all right? Now, we got to go through tribulation before we get there. And as you know, the elders and the apostles have been posting, all right, this, uh, this Edomite, Justin Trudeau, he's posting all of, like, you know, he's trying to get these laws passed to start criminalizing, uh, you know, start criminalizing the men of the Lord, hitting the highways and the hedges, try, try, trying to, uh, what is that, criminalize people that teach the Bible, all right. And that's to be expected. That's prophecy. We we get that. All right. But this is why I, I we, this is why we give double honors to our apostles and elders a great millstone. OK. And this is why we give, the, uh, you know, honors to the Akim a great millstone on down and those that teach the likewise doctrine, because that's what we're supposed to do is watch and blow the trumpet. All right. Let let our people know. Look, if you get in, if you come into what the beloved elder apostle Gabar affectionately calls this thing of ours, it's not a fad. It has nothing to do with being black. We're not black Hebrew Israelites. We are Hebrew Israelites. Black is a color and it has nothing to do with the final say on what your nationality is. All right. But the point is, these are buzzwords that Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white man. See, he calls himself white because white is associated with purity. It's, a, it's witchcraft, man. He's not white because he's not spiritually pure and he's not the color of a cloud. You can look at him and see that he's the red Hebrew Edomite, that old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of whose coming is after the workings of Satan, the spiritual demon. All right. So that's for any bug outs that keep trying to say, well, you know, there's a spiritual demon, Satan. So you're, you're bugged out because you're saying that a physical man is Satan. No, you clown. I'm saying that there's a physical counterpart of the spiritual demon, Satan. All right. A nation that the Heavenly Father has given the spiritual demon to operate that left hand will, as well as how on the right hand side, the Heavenly Father has the nation of Israel to operate his righteous will. All right, to do to um to you know do the do the will of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. <clears throat> now let me get back to this other precept. Uh Sirach chapter eleven, verse two, and it reads, Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. All right. Now, this doesn't mean this doesn't have any mo connotations to it. All right. This is just saying, like, all right, don't don't commend the dude because of how fly he looked, because of um you know, just don't commend Jake for outward stuff, man. Don't commend Jake for cosmetics and aesthetics and stuff. Like, oh yeah, he got a fly car, he got a this, he got the he got the full beard, he must be that guy. You know, just don't do that. All right. And it's also at the same time telling you, don't hate on don't hate on a uh, don't hate on a brother because he may not look the flyest. Like you don't don't hate on a brother because he looks uh less on point than another brother. All right, that's that's nigga culture. All right, we put all that away. We kill the old man, and we come into this truth, so we can learn how to better treat each other, man. We're supposed to be awkward. We ain't supposed to be, you know, niggas to each other. All right, and if you notice that in the world, even when Jake be like, oh yeah, you my nigga, like it don't mean anything, bro. Like, <laughs> you're like we're not niggas. We are the men of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. All right, we're striving to be fully entered into. Um, our glory. This is why the Lord told us that we are a holy nation, of, a holy kingdom of priests unto Him. So we gotta, we gotta, you know, one of the main ways we start off by rehearsing those acts is how we treat each other, because the elders and apostles and and the Akim on down of the Great Millstone and those that teach the likewise doctrine, they say it, they say it often. You know, you can't just be Mr. Precept Man. You got the best breakdowns. You do the most videos. You hit the highways and hedges. You always the camp on time. 
But, you know, when it comes to dealing with your brothers or, you know, the other six days out of the week, you're a complete nigga or you're a demon. You can't do that. All right. So it's you can't put <clears throat> Salaki, you can't put any aspect of the law behind you like it's not important. All right. Now, we understand you could only keep the laws to the best of your ability in this captivity. You have to apply your house shy. But that doesn't mean you look at the rest of the laws. It's not important. Me personally, I got into the practice of always reading. I, re I keep going back and reading the um. Uh, I keep going back and reading the Thawara, the law, the first five books of the Bible, you know, every now and then just, you know, and it is, it cannot, it can humble you too, because you look at it like, man, I can't keep this. We really need Yahweh shot. Like the beloved of Yahshua says, he keeps, he keeps trying to remind Jake about how important the grace period is that Yahweh shot went on the cross to give us. All right. And Jake keeps thinking they can do it on their own and not understand how blasphemous that is. But the point is, I go back and read that, you know, to, uh, to not only humble myself, and realize how much we need Yahweh Shah, but to also, you know, at least try to keep these laws when I can. All right. Like if I have it where if I ever come across any money or, you know, whatever, the, whatever situation, how about you know, throws my way in that situation allows me to uh, not wear mixed fabrics. I'll do that. So but to know, but to even know that I will have to read the law about mixed fabrics, which requires me going into, I believe it's the book of. um. <laughs> I believe it's either Leviticus or Numbers that actually gets into that. But yeah, it's, it's in the law. You know, like I said, it's in the law. The, uh, the Thaw Rod, the first five books of the Bible. All right. the law, What they call the law of Moses. Okay. But yeah, the point is, you know, commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. So don't, don't you know, be brown nosed and Jake just because he, um, he dresses a certain way and, you know, don't puff him up like he, he's that guy because you can puff his head up. You know, and then the Lord could end up, you know, destroying him because he may, you know, depending on his spirit, he may get arrogant or whatever the case may be. And, you know, at the same time, don't abort Jake because he may look, you know, dingy or whatever you may see. If you feel like that's the case, then as a brother, you could talk to him, and let him know. All right. And then, you know, you could even help him out. You know, that's what we do. Like alms is also a part of our uh, customs. All right. And for those who don't know, alms or alms giving is basically you helping you basically giving a brother a gift or, you know, you helping him out. And you don't make a big, you don't make a stink about it. You don't make it hot. You know, you don't be like, oh yeah, I did this for the, no, you don't do that. You just help the brother out. That's part of our culture. All right. Verse three, the bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. All right. And that's how, that's how Yahweh Bash Miao Shai, that's how he looks at his elect. All right. They may not always come, um, the flyest or the tallest or whatever the case may be, or the most articulate or um, the most prestigious as far as, oh yeah, we went to Esau Cemetery School and we got a biblical PhD in, in Bible studies and another PhD in the studies of the, the New Testament Gospels. No, it's the spirit of Yahweh Bash Miao Shah, man. That's the Rechak Wadash. It's that gift that Yahweh Shah sent down on us like he sent down to us like he promised that he would once he returned back to the earth. Uh, right hand of the heavenly father yahweh okay um and yeah so the bee like it says is little among such that as fly but her fruit is chief among sweet things because the bee is it's like one of the smallest insects all right or one of the smallest you know creatures that fly whether you're talking about insects or birds or whatever the case may be but you know it's been said on a few occasions you know i think i probably heard it on a tv show one time that uh, without bees, mankind will cease to exist. Now we know that ultimately, you know, it's it's all in the will of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, and you know, mankind's always going to exist because you know it's prophecy and it's the it's the word of the Lord that controls these things. But you know, getting into like how nature works, if it wasn't for what we know, then yeah, because bees are they they do a lot of stuff. You know, they uh pollinate different types of uh flowers, and without you know the flowers being pollinated, you won't get certain fruits, vegetables, uh, um herbs and other things that you wouldn't even be aware of. It's not just honey. It's a lot of different um, resources from the earth you wouldn't get if Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai didn't create bees to do what they do. But getting on the subject of the honey, where it says, but her fruit is the chiefest of sweet things. The main thing we hear about our ancestors eating is honeycomb, all right? And we know Jake still loves honeycomb to this day. I know, I know I'm one of them Jakes, <laughs> me personally. All right, and um, what else? You know, the beeswax, you know, you can use the beeswax for candles, uh, uh, the bee pollen. You know, I think I may or may not have told uh, Akim on, on maybe one or two occasions that the bee pollen is also good against allergies. 
All right, for brothers who, who, Akim, who struggle with that, if you use bee pollen, it helps fight your allergies, you know, a lot better. And, uh, yeah, and then the other thing, like I said, like, uh, the things you don't even think about, like uh, certain melons, I think, um, I forgot the other fruits, but I think Elder Yashawan, but he did a video eight months ago, I believe, probably going on 10, when he got into a list of all the different fruits and stuff that bees actually pollinate, that specifically bees pollinate that I didn't even know about. All right. I didn't even know about these fruits. And um, and yeah, bees are responsible for that. So, yeah, Yahweh Bosh Me on Shah, he has a perfect order. And um, he has a perfect order set up when, it, when he made nature, man. Like he doesn't need Esau's dumb ass doing any pesticides or any of that, any of that stuff. But he he he's the devil. What you expect? You know, his coming is after the working of Satan. He does everything opposite to what the order that Yahweh Bosh Me on Shah set up is. OK. But yeah, the bee is the it's little among fly, such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. So even though you may have it where Jake is uh, destitute, you know, we at the bottom right now compared to other nations. Not saying every Jake is on the street, you know, but, you know, we have it where ultimately if you want to compare us to the heathen nations, especially comparing us to Esau, we don't have anything physically. Now, we know that the true wealth is the knowledge of the scriptures, the knowledge of Yahweh Bosh Miao Shai. Because we understand the Lord can give us anything. It's nothing for him to make a poor man rich and a rich man poor. But he wants us to endure. So that being the case, he deprives us of certain things so he can strengthen us up and fulfill the prophecy that through much tribulation shall we enter to the kingdom of heaven. So between us not having that much financially or whatever the case may be compared to the heathen, not having that much protections, resources, um, uh, 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 networks and stuff like that, we also... Um, What's the other word I wanted to say? Between all those things, we also got to go into Jacob's trouble. All right. Those that have the faith, the true faith of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, those that are truly sincere and meek, and those the ones that the Lord is smiling upon, you know, they're going to have it on their spirit to re reject that MOTB, even if it means deletion, even if it means imprisonment, even if it means being exiled from society, you know, whatever the case may be. All right. And it may be difficult, but like the beloved of Yahshua Amba likes to say, you know, it's tight, but it's right. And it gets into the scripture through much tribulation. We shall be entered into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be a cakewalk. All right. If it was a cakewalk, everybody would be doing it. You would have a bunch of two third niggas lining up with blunts in their damn mouth doing unity camps, you know, while we <laughs> while we got to run from Esau. But that's not going to be the case. And Barak thought you how about me on shot? Because, yeah, the two thirds, they, they just got to go, man. Especially, you know, like the scripture says, the vain and unruly talkers amongst the circumcision. That's a Titus 1 and 10. All right. So Sirach chapter 11, verse 4, and it reads, Boast not of thy clothing and raiment, and exalt not thyself in the day of honor. For the works of Yahweh are wonderful, and his works among men are hidden. All right. Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of hath worn the crown. And that's beautiful because that does go back into like King David, for example. All right. The prophet Samuel being the spiritual man that he was, you know, once he got into the flesh for like a few minutes, he, um, you know, he was thinking immediately Eliab, the oldest brother of uh, King David, was going to be the next king. But the Lord, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, Yahweh had to remind him, like, nah, I rejected him. Don't worry about how tall he is and none of this. Like, I've rejected him. And, you know, then he asked about the other sons. And then the Lord told him, nah. But King David, the one that know that that even his own father, Jesse, didn't think would be the uh, the next king. He was the one that ended up being the king because he, he was he was the what you would call the uh, what's that worldly phrase? The runt of the litter. All right. He was the youngest out of uh, eight sons. OK. And we know that, like I said, in our culture, typically when it comes to the, the firstborn son, he gets first dibs when it comes to, you know, inheritance and, you know, rulership and stuff like that. And also people just look at him more favorably like, oh, yeah, he's that guy. But it was King David. And, you know, right here, verse six, it, it really it's like at verse five. It really does. Um, in, in our nation, in the nation of Israel, this this verse really does come alive more than any other nation. All right. Because Jake is always in that underdog seat for the most part. And then they get elevated. Like, um, for example, when it comes to Isaac and Ishmael. All right. Abraham, you know, he was him and his wife, Sarah, they were old. They were stricken in age. They was up. They was up there in years. So he was figuring like, all right, it's too late for me to have a child. 
the heavenly father Yahweh had other plans. He told him, um, yeah, uh, Ishmael, I got a blessing for him, but Sarah's going to bear you a son. And then he was like, he just, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe kind of in shock at first, but then the Lord told him, look, he, cause he was basically like, look, man, uh, not look, man, Salakia, but he told the heavenly father, like, Lord, I, I would that Ishmael would live before thee. Cause like, who, could a, could a child possibly be born to me? Who's, who's a hundred and, and my wife who's 90. He's like, look, surely as I said, your wife will bear you a son and don't worry about Ishmael. I've already blessed him with something, but that my covenant is going to be with your son named Isaac that you're going to have through Sarah. And it eventually happened. And you know, you would think because Ishmael's the first born and because, you know, Abraham got him easily. Abraham was feeling like, all right, yeah, you know, this is going to be my, my heir. He, I've been thinking the Lord made a mistake. Like, no, nah, the Lord didn't make a mistake. He's doing things on his time. And that's where faith comes in, which Abraham had, you know. But the point is, Isaac was the younger according to the flesh, but the Lord was dealing with him in the spirit. He's older than Ishmael. All right. And on top of that, getting into the precepts, he's the he's the son of the free woman, not the bond woman. All right. Which is symbolic of Israel. All right. It's a lock, yeah. uh, It's symbolic of what was that? It's a precept. Let me go ahead and get that. I believe it's in the book of Romans. The. Is it the ninth chapter? Uh, oh no 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 no! I got it messed up. It was a. Uh, it's been a while since I got this one. Come. The It's the book of uh, Galatians, chapter four. All right. And verse 21, and it reads, tell me ye that desire to be under the law. Do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Which is Salakia, which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Yerushalayim, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Yerushalayim, which is above, is free which is the mother of us all. All right. So this gets into how the covenants that we made with uh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through the prophet Masha, whom the world calls Moses on Mount Sinai, that was the first covenant standard, all right, where the laws, statutes and commandments were written on stone. And like the apostles and elders always get into that, that um, equated to the stony heart that our people had, the stiff neckness. All right. The rigidity in the law, even though they damn sure couldn't keep it perfectly, even though they had already broken it countless times and in countless incarnations. And even uh, Lord Yahweh, as well as Apostle Paul, you know, and the other apostles, they had told and the disciples, they had told Jake on multiple occasions to not boast in the law that, you know, you do these things, but you couldn't keep it perfectly. You put the yoke, on, you know, and Apostle Paul was telling them, look, you were trying to put a yoke on these newcomers, these Israelite foreigners that you couldn't even keep being born in the law you could even keep it so just ease him into it you know all these things now he was saying that's symbolic of mount sinai okay which is you know a contrast to jerusalem which is above is free and which is the mother of us all all right now we understand jerusalem jerusalem it's a people before it's a place okay and our lawyer howard shah he's our um our mediator and our high priest and our way back to the heavenly father. He's our mediator in the heavens, in the heavenly tabernacle, all right, which the first covenant standard in the first covenant tabernacle was uh, fashioned after. It was always a shadow of the heavenly tabernacle, which we, Adawan, Yahweh, Bashmi, Oshai, Ratazah, we be the elect men. We're about to be entered into. So, Jerusalem, which is, Salaki, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. That's getting into how, under grace, all right. Well, it also gets into how under grace we don't have that same. um, uh, What is that? That same yoke of perfection in the law. 
where, where that determines your salvation. Now salvation is determined on faith on Yahweh Shai, all right? And rehearsing these righteous acts to the best of our ability and endure to the end that we might be saved, okay? Now, they use this symbolism of um, of these two mounts comparing uh, to Sarah, all right, which is our mother, Abraham's wife, the free woman, who also is of Abraham's um, of Abraham's kindred versus Hagar, the, the bond woman, who was the heathen, all right, and basically technically was his concubine. Okay. Now, uh, read on verse 27. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travaileth not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise. And it gets back into Jake, you know, constantly being in that underdog spirit. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bosh on Shai, he knows how to make a great story, man. A story wouldn't be that great if you had a protagonist or, you know, a main character that always wins or, well, I'll put it like this, never has any difficulty because Jake wins, but it doesn't come without difficulty. All right, we know King David to be the great king he was, but we also know about the strife that he had to go through. We know that, you know, before when he was, you know, a young man, he beat Goliath because he had faith. He um, came up in the rank in Israel's army under King Saul, but King Saul had an evil spirit on him, and he was, you know, he was had an evil eye towards David. He was envious towards him, so he tried to put him, he tried to put him to death on many occasions. But the heavenly Father Yahweh delivered him out of all those occasions, and he showed him favor in the places that. He was going to and the places that he, you know, would seek refuge from and stuff like that. And King David went off as far as, you know, when he got a little older, he committed adultery. He became king and he committed murder. But the Heavenly Father, through the mercies of David, you know, he spared his life, but he still had to suffer. But we still know him as that great man because of his his uh, broken spirit and contrite heart and all the other deeds that come along with that. And, you know, other ancestors that we got, other different accounts that I can get into, but. You know, the point is the great men of our nation, they always, you know, get they either get overlooked or they looked at it as the underdog or they, you know, wh however they looked at, they still got to go through the lot. Yahweh Bosh Me Shah put them in. And the Lord, when, you know, they have faith in the Lord, he helps them overcome. And that's the same favor that we're praying for in these in these last days. All right. And these perilous times to come, as the beloved brother Ashba says. OK, now uh, verse twenty nine. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So, yeah, this is parabolic. And like it says, it's, out, it's an allegory. All right. Which things are an allegory of these two covenants. OK. So, like I was saying. The um, allegory of the bond woman and the free woman. It, you know, it gets it gets allegorical comparing the first covenant with the second covenant. All right. Because on the first covenant, we were stuck under bondage and, um, you know, perfection in the law, which we can't keep while in this flesh. The flesh was the problem. It wasn't the law. It was us in this flesh versus the uh, the new covenant, as well as the grace period we're under, which is uh, allegoric, uh, it's allegor, it's like it's an allegory of the free woman, okay. And we understand that, like physically, the free woman was Sarah, and physically, the bond woman was Hagar. But the point is, we have one. We have this grace through um, Hamas Yaki Hawa Shai. That's the only way we can even have. The ability to do what we're about to do, you know, I came about to get into the Passover. All right. If, if we were under the first covenant standard, we'd be cut off because we're not in Jerusalem to keep the Passover. But the Wadi Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, Wadi Barakatha Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. And um, two, which gets back to the title of the epistle. All right. You got to refine your spiritual eyes because the Heavenly Father, the children of the promise are going to be the people that's looked down upon or. Not even just looked down upon as far as being despised, but overlooked. All right. People are not going to necessarily be like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, it, it may be some Jake's that, you know, have that first pick type thing going on with your how about you know, shot makes that your lot. But for the most part, Jake gets overlooked. And even if Jake gets the first pick, once Jake gets in the truth, women start, you know, changing up. 
you know, your high bars, your shot stars, you know, pushing them out your life because they're not on the level. All right. So it, and it goes from that to, you know, people, you know, friends that you might have had in the world that may start looking down on you or may start overlooking you like, nah, man, something, 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 you changed up this and that or a number of things. And then even if it's not that, it may be the case of, all right, you, um, yeah, people just always overlook you because you may come off meek or you may come off this or that, but you know, that's, those are the people you how about your shots dealing with. It said, the scripture says the meek shall inherit the earth. All right. So yeah, the point of this epistle was, you know, you never know who's who. All right. Brothers may uh brothers may be less uh what's the word I'm looking for? I can't say less vocal because everybody has to speak and you know do the work, but I don't know. Let me just say less vocal for lack of a better word. Let's say like if I had to compare like um two different like polar opposites or something. Like one brother may be more like um one brother may be more uh like a, a fiery personality and one brother may be more like a chill personality. But, you know, those things, one thing or the other doesn't really determine who your how about me on shots dealing with because both brothers may be meek where it matters. You know, they may be meek according to the scriptures and like according to what your how about me on shot commands you to be. One brother may be more on fire when he gets passionate about stuff. The other brother may still be cool, but still have that same passion. and just doesn't show it openly. But it's the spirit. And, you know, you will only be able to know that if you know how to discern the spirit. But that's all I have for this epistle. Hopefully this lesson was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahav, Rechak, Wadash, double honors as always to the apostles and the elders in the sense the argument of great millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing and sincere salutation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews of life foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and Abba Baba. We almost out of here. Adawan Ratiza, and we got next Adawan Ratiza. Shema Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad. Shalom.